What's going on guys? Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. You saw the title and yeah, it's a pretty dark one today. Here are the top 10 evil doctors in history who went mad. Kicking off the list at number 10, George Chapman. This list is bad insane, so fair warning of the content that will follow. It's actually really dark. I try and be a silly goose whenever I can, but this list, honestly, I have like two bits, maybe in total. We'll see. So hang in there, is what I'm trying to say. Let's do it. Starting off with George Chapman. We're going back to the late 1800s for this guy. He began his career as a Polish doctor, but in 1888, he moved to London, and that's when things got dicey, to say the least. Once in London, Chapman sought out four mistresses, despite, as the late Rob Ford once said, having more than enough to eat at home. I'm happily married. I've got more than enough to eat at home. Thank yeah, he was our mayor. Fun fact, gotta love Ontario. But George Chapman was a doctor. He was a cheater and George Chapman was a killer. He poisoned all four of these women with arsenic. Chapman was executed for these crimes in 1903. And this guy was so bad that they thought perhaps he could have been Jack the Ripper, but that's since been disproven. So I guess he's still out there. That's a horrible thought to end on. That was just one out of 10. Like I said, buckle up. Number nine, Gwen Graham and Kathy Wood. This one is a two for one in terms of awful people. Gwen Graham and Kathy Wood. They were both working together at a nursing home in Michigan. But together, they both took the lives of five patients. They would do so by smothering them with a pillow. How awful is that? And to make this even more twisted, if such a thing can exist in this case, they did these attacks to prove their love to one another. Luckily, they were caught and locked up in 1989, but the fact that they worked together to carry out these attacks legit gives me the creeps. I didn't like typing about this or researching this. It's an awful thing to learn. This list is full of the worst doctors, but this pair, I don't know why, it just sticks with me right in here. Number eight, Elizabeth Wetlaufer. She was once a nurse at at several long-term care facilities in Southern Ontario. Yep, really hitting close to home for this one. Elizabeth Wetlaufer would use lethal doses of insulin to end the lives of her patients. Now, after the patient had passed away, Elizabeth would then steal their opioids to support her own addiction. So it's bad, and then it just gets worse. In 2016, she quit her nursing job, checked herself into a psychiatric hospital, and confessed to all of her crimes. She confessed to eight counts of first-degree murder, four counts of attempted, and two counts of aggravated assault. These happened from 2000 to 2016 in Woodstock, Ontario. So very close to where I am right now. Don't come find me and kill me. Thanks. Elizabeth is now 55. She's serving eight concurrent life sentences. But after 25 years, thanks to Canadian law, she gets a chance at parole because, you know, second chances. Well, am I right? There's things I love about being a Canadian, but like this, how they handle monsters like this is not one of them. Number seven, Morris Bulber. He was once part of the Philadelphia Poison Ring, which, yep, was a real thing. How horrible does that sound already? The Philadelphia Poison Ring. Okay, I'll talk about that first. It was led by these two Italian cousins, Paul and Herman Petrillo. This was back in the 1930s, and these two bros were perfect for each other in an awful way. Always the pairs, always the awful pairs. Harold was the arsonist who knew how to make counterfeit money, and Paul, he ran an insurance scam out of the back of his tailor business. Bad news in every direction. So already this awful duo exists. And then in comes Morris Bulber, this Russian Jewish immigrant who believed in something called La Fatura, which was this magical practice that Italians from South Philadelphia believed in at the time. Also so specific, just specific amount of Italians from Southern Philadelphia. Okay, just avoid that place, I guess. But this Dr. Bulber would give potions to their patients. And it was specifically patients from these cousins because they issued insurance policies without medical exams. So they would get this Dr. Bulber to poison them with arsenic. The reason they had this scheme was because their insurance policies would then pay out the gang rather than the now widowed wives. How horrible is that? When they didn't need Dr. Evil, the cousins would just hire thugs to drown victims or hit them with their cars, horrible stuff like that. This kicked off around 1931 and roughly 50 people bit the bullet before he was finally arrested in 1939. And yes, he turned the evidence over so that these two cousins were also found guilty. Everyone got f***ed in this one. They were both sentenced to death. So just everyone got the most horrible treatment in every sense. Number six, John Bodkin Adams. He was once a general practitioner in the British community in Essex and most of his patients were that of the elderly and he treated those patients with care. From 1946 to 1956, John had around 160 patients that died suspiciously, and out of all those 160, 132 of them left valuables for him after they passed away. What are the odds, right? Now, of course, the wills were later found out to be fraudulent because, well, of course, this list exists. And the worst part of all this is that John was acquitted. His trial established the doctrine of double effect, which is where a doctor giving treatment with the aim of relieving pain may lawfully, as an unintentional result, shorten their life. But like, 
like that many times? Come on. So out of the dozens of cases that ended horribly, Adams was only charged for two of them. He wasn't even convicted of their deaths. He was guilty of forging prescriptions and falsifying medical forms. He even reopened his practice afterwards, but this time around, patients avoided him. Number five, Jane Toppin. It's the 1880s and Jane Toppin, aka Jolly Jane, is now confessing to 31 murders. With that nickname and that many victims, you're probably just as shook as I was writing this. Jolly Jane Toppin was a nurse working in Massachusetts. She would take care of the elderly as well. It's always something to do in that case, horrible. But instead of TLC, Jane would give them morphine and atropine. And while they were slowly fading away, Jane would do the absolute creepiest thing I've ever heard of. She would poison these old folks and then lie in their bed with them while they were passing away. Like literally beside them. That's the worst thing I've ever had to tell somebody out loud. That's horrible. I couldn't imagine doing something like this. She managed to take the lives of 31 patients before eventually getting caught. She spent the remainder of her days laying alone, thankfully, in an asylum. Number four, Linda Hazard. Her last name really tried to tip us off here. She has since been dubbed the starvation doctor because back in the day, the late 1800s, that is, if you somehow ended up in the office of Hazard, it doesn't really matter what you're there for. Linda's advice, no matter what, her medical advice, her professional advice for everything was too fast. Right. Yeah, your knee's dislocated, eh, no problem. Just skip lunch, see how you feel. More than 40 of her patients died due to, well, you guessed it, starvation. And she even had her own sanitarium in Washington appropriately named Starvation Heights. You would think that after 16 deaths caused by starvation at a place called Starvation Heights, people would start asking questions. Now, eventually Hazard was caught, convicted, and served two years in prison. But 26 years later, in 1938, she herself died of starvation. You played yourself, Linda. Number three, Thomas Cream. This next one, again, hits close to home for us in Canada. Thomas Neil Cream originally graduated from McGill in 1876, and after that, he traveled to London, England. London, England, not London, Ontario. Definitely, definitely didn't travel there. The other one's way better. This was during the time of the Industrial Revolution as well, so the demand for doctors was quite high. Thomas was there for business and apparently he was there for pleasure. He enjoyed London's nightlife. He would dance, drink, and hook up with strangers. Just, you know, all the things you don't want your medical doctor doing hours before a procedure. On November 15th, 1892, there were thousands gathered outside the Newgate prison walls, eagerly awaiting the execution of one Dr. Thomas Cream. Boom, what happened? Well, he's now referred to as the Lambeth Poisoner. We got another poisoner on this horrible list. If you had the misfortune of seeing this guy, odds are he would have just tried to poison you no matter what you went in there for. Just because. He just liked to do it. What a monster. He actually did get caught once. He was convicted of poisoning a woman once. He was given life in prison, but it's all about who you know, right? His brother ended up bribing the governor of Illinois at that point, so he poisoned five more people after in London before eventually getting caught and arrested again. And then finally, this time around, he was executed. And this time around, there's also a crowd. Rightfully so. Number two, Michael Swango. When he was just a child, Michael Swango did not collect rocks. He didn't spin Beyblades with friends. He didn't have Pokemon cards or anything like that. Instead, he had scrapbooks filled with horrible car accidents or any crime scene that's awful to look at would be in the scrapbook as if there weren't any red flags there alone with what i just said when michael got to college he decided to write his chemistry thesis on Georgi markov and more specifically he studied his horrific death caused by you guessed it poison. He was fascinated after that point, he had a newfound obsession, and it was poisons and how they silently took lives. This was intriguing to somebody. Now during his third year at school, five patients that had the misfortune of seeing him just happened to die afterwards. Big mystery. Hmm. His classmates actually had a nickname for him, which is horrible. They called him Double O in reference to James Bond, 007, but more of a reference to License to Kill. You think people would ask questions? I don't know. After an internship, people of course were dying off, but one individual luckily survived. And she remembered a few important details. She remembered that Swango had injected her with something just a minute before she started experiencing seizures. He still got away with it somehow, and then later he went to another hospital in Ohio in 1984, handed out donuts that made the staff sick, and then when they required treatment, he, would help them, but really he'd poison them. He got caught then, was sentenced to five years, but was released after two. He then changed his name, moved to Virginia, got a job as a career counselor, and poisoned those co-workers as well. He got caught again again after doing this like three more times, and now he's serving three life sentences at ADX Supermax Federal Prison. This is actually insane. If I told you everything that he actually got away with, like I crunched it down, this video would be too long if I included it all. You'd think it was a marathon here on Most Amazing. Nope, just the horrible acts of one Michael Swan. 
way I go. And finally, number one, H.H. Holmes. H.H. Holmes was an absolute monster, just a horrible human being. His fascination with medicine started at a young age as well. He used to perform these surgeries on stuffed animals, which is just, again, red flags. It's never been confirmed, but it's highly believed that his first victim was one of his first friends. H.H. went to go on to medical school, and shortly after finishing, he began killing people in order to steal their property. How insane is that? He then built himself this huge, horrifying home, this house that had like tunnels and trap doors and doors that locked from the outside and all that super villain crap. He even had to kill him to cremate these bodies in his house. That's, you know what I'm talking about, one of those guys? I think it's safe to say he was absolutely the worst person on this list. I mean, not that we're trying to compare, but kind of hard to be more evil than this guy. Not only would he get close to women to take control of their finances and then kill them afterwards, but he would also require his employees to take out life insurance policies that named him as a beneficiary. Some of these bodies he ended up selling to medical schools, which is just... I can't even go down that road of huh. Eventually he was found out, luckily, and he was caught and sentenced to death. Now it's not exactly known how many victims he had, but it's thought to be somewhere in the 200 range. Disgusting, right? That's what this list is all about. Those are the top 10 evil doctors in history who went mad. Of course we can do a part two. We can do many, many parts to this. This is terrible, terrible stuff. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters, and we'll see you next time on Most Amazing Top 10. Peace. <laughs>